It's incredible to think you can run 72 different classic game systems all on your PlayStation 3. And it can all be done on a storage drive not much larger than your own thumbnail. What's also great is you can run this on any model of PlayStation 3, no matter whether you're running a system on custom firmware or PS3 Hen. Stick around, you're about to learn something new. All of this gets done through the power of the RetroArch Community Edition for PlayStation 3. It's hosted at the PSX Place website and linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on this page and you'll find a clickable text tab here called how to install slash update. Click on that tab and you'll see a new set of text instructions below the tab. You'll see an underlined text link inside those text instructions. Click that link to download the RetroArch Community Edition. You'll also need a way to format a high-capacity USB drive in FAT32 format because Windows can't natively do this. Grab the GUI format software shown in the video and linked in the video description by clicking the big picture right in the middle of the website. You should have two files in the Downloads section of File Explorer, a RetroArch package file for your PlayStation 3 and the GUI format software. Go ahead and insert the USB drive you intend to format in FAT32 format. Take a moment to make note of the drive letter that's assigned to your USB storage by Windows. Once you've identified the drive letter, you can close out the window for File Explorer that represents this USB storage. From here, navigate to GUI Format and double-click on the software. At the UAC prompt, click on Yes to continue. An important note here, before you use GUI Format, make sure that you close out any instances of File Explorer that are open so that it can access the USB storage. Take a look at the top left corner of the GUI format interface. You need to select the correct drive letter for the drive you want to format. In this case, it was not set correctly by default. I'm going to select drive G, but select the drive that's represented in File Explorer for your USB storage. Click start in the bottom right corner, and at the confirmation prompt, click OK to format your drive in FAT32 format. Once the process is complete, click the close button in the bottom right corner to close out GUI format. Now that you've got your USB storage properly formatted, reopen the Downloads folder inside File Explorer. You can delete the UI format out of your Downloads folder or archive it somewhere else on your computer. I already have it saved somewhere else on this computer, so I'll delete it out of the Downloads folder. We'll need to copy some specific files and folders over to your USB storage. To do this, I'm going to grab the File Explorer window for downloads and just push it all the way over to the left side. You might find that your newly formatted USB storage isn't immediately recognized by your computer. You can fix this by just removing it and reinserting it back into your computer. Now in this instance, I'll take this File Explorer window that represents the USB storage and push it all the way over to the right. The first thing I'm going to copy over here is the package file for RetroArch. You can just grab it and drop it directly under the root of the USB storage device. Along with RetroArch itself, you're going to need two things. You'll need game files and optionally but highly recommended system BIOS files. I have a folder pre-staged here that's called the demo folder. Inside this folder, I have exactly that, ROM files and system BIOS files. Inside the ROMs folder, I have the systems split up into their own separate subfolders. I have a single ROM file in zip format in each of these folders for games that I own. I have Atari Lynx specifically here because it requires the use of system BIOS files to work correctly inside RetroArch. I also have a folder here called System. This folder contains a number of system BIOS files that are necessary for the cores or emulators to work correctly for RetroArch. You can organize your ROMs and BIOS files in any way that works for you. Grab your ROMs and system BIOS files and drag and drop them directly onto the root of your USB storage. As a quick housekeeping step here, navigate back to your Downloads folder. Inside the Downloads folder, you can delete the RetroArch file because you don't need it any longer. And remember, anything that you delete is still archived in your recycle bin. Go ahead and close out the File Explorer window for downloads and eject the USB drive from your computer. Insert the USB drive into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3 system. If you're running a PlayStation 3 on HEN, go ahead and enable HEN now. From the cross media bar of your PlayStation 3, let's go ahead and get RetroArch installed on your system. Scroll through the cross media bar over to the Games tab, then down to Package Manager. Press X, and in the submenu that appears, use the D-pad to scroll down to install package files. Press X. To select your USB drive, scroll down through the choices to Standard and press the X button on your controller. From here, press the X button to install the RetroArch Community Edition to your PlayStation 3. Give your system a couple of minutes to complete the installation process. Once it's complete, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. Now that you've installed RetroArch, you can delete the package file or installer file off of the USB storage. Press the X button, then scroll down to delete package files. Select it with X, then just like before, scroll down to standard and select it with the X button. You'll see the RetroArch package file here. 
Press the triangle button to pull out the side cart menu. Delete should already be highlighted, select it with the X button. It may not look like it's been deleted because you still see the file name here, but it's actually in the process of deleting the file. There's no confirmation here. Once you select delete, the file's deleted from your USB storage. Once you have the file deleted, press the circle button several times to go back to the game tab in the cross media bar. To launch RetroArch for the first time, scroll down to its icon in the cross media bar and press the X button. There are some key things every RetroArch installation should have completed when you first install the software and run it for the first time. First up, there are some key things that need to be downloaded and updated. To do this, from the main menu, scroll down to Online Updater and select it with the X button. The very first submenu setting you'll see here is called the Core Downloader. You can think of downloading a core as downloading any individual emulator to run the ROMs that you put on your USB storage. Select Core Downloader with the X button. RetroArch will download a list of the most recent cores available for you to install into your system. In this case, you might remember I have four different game systems. I had Atari Lynx, the NES, the Super NES, and the Sega Genesis. For whichever game systems and ROMs you want to run on RetroArch, make sure that you have the highlights set to an appropriate core and press the X button to download that core. So in this case, I'm downloading one for the Atari Lynx, one for the NES, one for the Super NES, and then one for the Sega Genesis. You can select the core of your choice. There are oftentimes more than one available for you to choose from. Once you have the cores downloaded for the systems that you want to play games for, press the circle button to go back one level in the menu to Online Updater. Next step, look down in the menu and find every single listing that has the word Update next to it in the menu choice. These include updating core info files, controller profiles, cheats, databases, overlays, and CG shaders. There's one last listing underneath all of the updates, and it's for the on-demand thumbnail downloader. I recommend that you turn this setting on. You'll see why in just a moment. Cool, now that you have all this taken care of, press the circle button to go back one level in the menu. All right, unless you want the aspect ratio police knocking on your door, here's what I recommend you do. Slide over to the left, scroll down to settings, select it with X, and in the list of choices on the right, select video with the X button. Inside the video submenu, you'll see a listing for scaling. Bring the highlight down to scaling with the D-pad and select it with X. There's a submenu setting here called aspect ratio. Use the D-pad to bring the highlight down to aspect ratio. It's set by default to 16 by 9 for your widescreen television, but most of the games you'll play will either be in 4 by 3 aspect ratio or 3 by 4 aspect ratio. To fix this, press left on the D-pad several times until you change this setting to core provided. Once you have this set, press the circle button on the controller several times until you're all the way back to the main level of the settings menu. Next up, to use your system BIOS files, you need to tell RetroArch where they're located. To do this from the main menu, scroll up a couple of times to go all the way down to the bottom of the menu. This is where directory is located. Press the X button to select directory. The very first submenu inside directory deals with the system BIOS files. Select it with the X button. You'll be taken to a list of storage locations for your PlayStation 3. In this instance, you want to use USB storage. Scroll down to Dev USB 000 and select it with the X button. Locate the folder that contains your system BIOS files. In this case, wait for it, it's system. Scroll down to it and select it with X. From the list of choices that appear inside the submenu, highlight Use this directory with the D-pad and select it with the X button. This will set the path for your system BIOS files to the appropriate location on your USB storage. Press the circle button several times until you're taken all the way back to the main menu of RetroArch. From here, it'd be a real shame not to save all the configuration work you've done. From the main menu, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to Configuration File and select it with the X button. From here, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to Save Current Configuration and select it with the X button. Then press circle to go back to the top of the main menu. From here, scroll down to Import Content in the left navigation pane and select it with the X button. From the choices in the submenu on the right, select Scan Directory with the X button. This will take you back to the list of storage locations on your PlayStation 3. Just like you did before, scroll down to Dev USB 000 and select it with the X button. Locate the folder that contains your game ROM images in it. Select it with the X button. Inside this folder, scroll down to the listing for Scan This Directory and select it with X. I've only got four games loaded on the USB storage, so this goes really fast, but if you have a metric ton full of games on here, it can take, well, hours. 
Either way, once you've got your game scanned, press the circle button several times until you get all the way back to the main menu of RetroArch. Now have a look in the left navigation. You'll see that there's a new item entry for each one of these systems. When you hover over them with your cursor, you'll also see that the games list for each of these systems is available in the right navigation. And when you hover over those, you'll see that you now have cover art available for each of the games for each of the systems. Pretty cool. To verify that the games have been imported correctly and the BIOS files are being read correctly, I'm going to launch California Games for the Atari Lynx. To launch a game, just press the X button several times on your game and you'll be playing your favorite retro games in no time at all. And since you've made it this far in the video, you've unlocked a bonus tip. To exit a game, press both of the analog thumbsticks in at the same time. Then scroll down to Close Content and select it with the X button. This takes you back to the main menu of RetroArch where you can load another one of your retro gaming favorites. And if you want to play backups of PS3, PS2, PS1, and PSP games, check out Managuns shown here on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment.